Wow. Woo! Nick, <sighs> tell me what you thought of that season's forma. Well, she's a charger. My legs are, are burning um, after riding her. You can hold a rail really, really well. Um, very lively board. I'd say I could really feel that camber. I've been riding a lot of flat camber lately. And uh, that board, like it's one of those boards where if you don't ride it, it rides you. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah, doesn't it defy your typical swallowtail feel? It does, it does. Yeah. I, actually, I forgot that I was on a swallowtail. Um, yeah, it, it felt like I was on a race board, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Like a Donick or a Kessler. <laughs> yeah. It's a beast. It's a beast. It is yeah. a beast. Can you believe you're uh, set all the way forward on that? Uh, no, I can't believe it. That's so crazy. Welcome to The Good Ride. I'm James Beastie, and I'm deeply committed to an open relationship with snowboard gear. This is the Season Equipment Forma Review. I rode this with Union Atlas primarily, Burton Tourist, Burton Ions, Burton Kendos, and Burton Imperials. Got some time on my drift boards with this. I rode this board in a wide variety of conditions, everything from hard groomers to wet, sloshy, but fun to carve groomers, really good groomers, soft snow, a little bit of powder, a little bit more powder, and finally got something about almost knee high to really understand how this board does in powder. So I got this in a wide variety of conditions and compared it against a lot of my favorites. To give you a short summary, the Season Forma is a pretty much full camber, super setback, carving beast that really springs out of a turn and does a really good job floating in powder for having all that camber. It's a really good board for those who want a tapered directional super setback carvy floaty daily driver. Now let's get into sizing. Even with my size 9 boots it's a pretty wide board underfoot but it's a little shorter it just works. I, I, I felt like it was the right choice for me. I don't think I'd want smaller or bigger. I felt like I could control it fine. And I felt like my 190 to 200 pounds, depending on the time I rode it, worked really well with this. So that kind of surprised me. I'd probably keep it under a size 11, but it's all up to your boot footprint and your boot size. The shape of this is tapered directional with a very mellow swallowtail. And I like that mellow swallowtail more than those exaggerated aggressive swallowtails. The camber profile is mostly camber. I would say it's almost all camber. I'm not seeing much or any early rise. It feels really locked in, really powerful, and really catchy. It's mostly for expert riders, but uh, strong advanced riders could ride this too. I felt there were numerous situations where I almost caught an edge when I got off my game. And that can be a little tiresome for some people, but it really tracks well though. And I love that about old school camber like this. Let's take a look at the flex here. You can see in the nose, super stiff. In the middle, super stiff. I would say this is just stiff. Let's turn this around to the tail. Very stiff, just stiff throughout. And yeah, it is, I would call this stiff, stiff, stiff. But somehow it was doable buttering. It took a lot of work, but I could do it. I could butter off the tail and I could butter okay off the nose, but it was a lot of work. And the pop though, is way more accessible than I thought it would be for this kind of flex. I found that it was very easy to generate my own air on an Ollie, and it just has this really like fun, dynamic flex to it that uh, really was fun to engage. When it comes to speed, they did this right. First off, it is so damp and uh, fast for a 152. It just feels like it's a much bigger board when you start to pick up some speed. 
But secondly, the base is super fast. It's got amazing glide, and when well waxed, it really jams. And lastly, it's just damp. This board, the way they've constructed it, I think it's at SWS, a good factory that makes really good boards, just absorbs that high speed chatter um, in all conditions. And I just felt like it had a really like stable, fast, aggressive feel underfoot. It's a nice, damp ride without feeling dead, and that's really cool. When it comes to edge hold, there's no real disruption that I can see in the side cut. It seems pretty smooth, but for some reason it grips really well in hard snow, and it's almost there with some boards that I compared this against with a disrupted side cut, like for example, the Jones Stormwolf. It was pretty close when it came to edge hold. Over time, this might get a little, um, have a little less grip, but overall, it's it's very good for those hard snow days. Maybe not ice, but very good. Now, when it comes to turn initiation, this board turns really well. It has this feel that isn't super quick, but isn't super slow. I just kind of like that middle ground, kind of medium turn initiation. And in powder, the turn initiation obviously gets quicker and it would just never had a problem in tight spots or in trees with this. The turning experience is really cool too. It has this side cut that, and this camber that just has so much spring out of the turn. I compared this to a lot of my favorite turny boards. Um, like for example, I took out my Karua Dart. I thought they would be much more similar. They're so different in the way they turn. The Karua Dart feels really directional and front foot drivey. That's where it, it excels. It likes posi rear, posi front. This just is set it up however you'd like and both had a very different turning experience. They're just night and day difference even though they have um, a slightly similar look. It really just has this powerful, fun, hard carving turn that you can do quick turns with it moderately well. It's really good in those down the line turns where you're just making kind of long drawn out high speed S turns. Does really well there. But it also carves across the groomers and circle carves really well. It's a really balanced side cut that allows you to do just a little bit of everything um, depending on your mood. Very fun carver, one of the highlights of my season um, when it comes to turning. This thing just has spring and power. When it comes to powder, there is a lot of setback on board. This sits way far back on the tail. It is such a unique ride in that aspect. And that helps compensate for all that camber that you see in this profile too. So while it might not be the floatiest of floaty, and there are some boards out there that have a little more directional float, this can still hang in just about any kind of powder. <laughs> it had no problem. It wasn't really trying in knee-high powder. Yeah, it wasn't like you just didn't see that nose just staying way up there. It took a tiny bit of back foot weight, but overall, this is just amazing for all that camber. And if you like camber boards and powder and all that pop and drive that you can get out of it, you're gonna love this. This is one of the best I've ever tried in terms of just full, almost full on camber. It's just such an easy floater. It turned really well in the trees and I just had a blast with this. And I'm glad I waited to see what it could do in some moderate powder. And I love just the base glide. It was just so smooth and fast in powder. It just kept its speed so well. And I got out of areas where I might have made an extra turn before a traverse. And usually if you do that, you don't make it out. With this, I made it out. So I really like that. And yeah, I it brought back some love for almost full camber powder riding. So overall, I was really impressed with the Forma. It, it's a board I'd like to own. It's a board I'd like to ride more and more. I love the way this carves. That really took me by surprise. It's just such a hard, dynamic carver. And it was one of the highlights this year for carving. And it's very just stance angle, stance width neutral. It lights up with any way you want to set it up. And I like that.
All our reviews are a best effort, objective opinion from an average writer's perspective. There's no brand oversight, and we're free to say whatever we want. We send back everything unless it's a favorite, then we ask to keep those or straight up buy them. Now, if you need advice, fill out the MeHarmony profile in the Contact Us section of the site. It's the only way I can help you properly. If you want to support us, and if what we reviewed appeals to you, it helps if you buy through our links. So, thanks for watching.